we plan to be here for this it's just, it's just better and good, I tell you, to be in the house of the Lord. And I uh, heard a fellow say one time, I would be here in any brand new jail I have in the, in the world. <laughs> I'm be here. I'm going to be here. Turn your books and your Bibles to the book of Luke. And we've got two or three different places we these scriptures are are wrote, but we want to try to study out of Luke some and then maybe uh, Mark a little bit. But anyway, in Luke's gospel in the eighth chapter, we would that you turn the page, uh, got this page in my mind as well, chapter, 40, uh, chapter 8, verse 41. <clears throat> and in this in this study this morning, we see two people that I wanted to mention here and talk to you about just a little bit. One of them was a man by the name of Jairus, and another one was a, a woman uh, that had a, a, a blood problem. She had it for several years. And uh, they come to Jesus, and they had heard of Jesus, I know, because of their actions and their words, and they uh, evidently uh, had heard about him from a, an incident that was that went on when they when he met this man in the tomb, and uh, he was he was loaded down with demons, and uh, so this is what we want to show you this morning. Uh, in this in this study but in verse 41 and behold there came a man in Jairus and he was a ruler of the synagogue now I want you to I want you to know this this ruler of the synagogue what he was he was he was a, a sort of an important man and he was a keeper of the synagogue he scheduled all the meetings and had everything that uh, was going on. He took care of it. And evidently, I know he had in some work met Jesus because Jesus went to the synagogues and he was in one place there he stood up and read Isaiah. So we know that he, and he went in, into these synagogues and he, and he spoke and, and, and this and, and Jesus was regular attending and he also was always doing miracles and this man Jairus uh, more than likely had seen him so we see here that Jairus had a problem at home with his daughter and his daughter Matthew says was dead mm -hmm. and uh, one and the, the, I think Luke and Mark maybe say that she he said that she was dying but anyway probably she was she was in a in a state of death because you remember when Lazarus had died and uh, uh, Jesus said uh, he's sleeping and so this is the case here probably with the daughter she was she was so near death that uh, they couldn't tell the difference but anyway here in in verse forty one as he came to Jesus uh, the ruler of the synagogue and he fell down at his feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay a dying. But as he went, the people thronged him. Now, why were they, they were thronging him, or they were pressing on him, or they were just around him and pushing and shoving, trying to get to him like, we see on the television of these big uh, rallies and all of this, people were just going wild about it. And, and, and we see that, that this is from, the, from the, the thing that Jesus did to the man that was, was, was uh, uh, possessed with all of these demons. He had, just, he had just seen this man and he relieved him of his demons and he told the man, he says, now you go home and you talk to your family because the man wanted to follow Jesus. And he said, no, you just go home and tell your family about it. Well, to me this morning, that is a, a special message to each one of us this morning as we are uh, thinking about serving the Lord. We need to 
We need to be at home with our family, first of all. We need to talk to them. We need to every day explain to them or to uh, encourage them in the Lord. And then, and then afterwards, we can spread out and, and be a witness to others. But this man, he was so, he was so uh, carried away, if you would, or he was so blessed that that listen he was in this he was in this graveyard walking around and they would they would shackle him they would chain him and listen he, he would just break them because of all those devils that he had in him and so these uh these devils were controlling him but once he got his relief and he said when they came to him and uh, and found him he was sitting in his right mind he was dressed and he was acting normal Right. So when he left people, he was normal. And that's the way this morning that we are when we are called of the, of the Holy Spirit unto the Lord. And when we uh, are uh, saved, listen, these old demons leave our soul and they get out. And we're, right. we're in a different state, people. We're in a different state. This old body may not be changed but we are in a different state when we when we come to the realization that our sins are forgiven that we have uh, a, a home in heaven and, and god is our father and jesus is our savior and we know all of these things we're in a different state of mind altogether and so he was so happy when he left jesus that he went out all over the country and he proclaimed his name and he's telling them all how all what he's done for me and listen this Jairus nor no more likely heard this and this woman that we are about to talk to you about this morning she probably heard it too because of the wording that she had spoke to Jesus and so these things these things here that we're talking about this morning is things that we as God's people need to do. We need to be a witness for the Lord. We need to tell other people regardless of what they look like, what they say to us or whatever. We need to tell other people our experience with Amen. the Lord and what he did for us because listen, you don't know who you're talking to because it may be an elect of Christ or right. God and it may not be, but the thing of it is, when you stand before God and you've given your testimony to those people, and e even if they haven't, uh, uh, weren't uh, uh, chosen, listen, you've got rewards for this. Amen. You're going to enjoy more things of heaven, and I don't, I have no idea how to explain to you how one will enjoy greater rewards than other. I have no idea. But I, I believe the Bible tells us that there'll be rewards in heaven, and some, you know, gets one. In, in, in when uh, Jesus used one place there when he left, he gave some thirty, some, uh, some uh, ninety, and some one. But the thing of it is, there's going to be rewards in heaven for us. Mm -hmm. And so this morning, we want to see what Jairus, uh, what the, what the, the he told him. He told him. He says he, he she's dying. And so here I understand that in one of the scriptures here that Jesus immediately started towards a man's house. And the people were just just all over him and all around him and everything. And notice here what happened. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all her living upon physicians, neither could be healed any touched the border of his garment and immediately her issue of blood stand or it stopped and jesus said who touched me now i believe this is this is something this is something here that why he did this is because he knew who was Amen. He knew that woman would be there in a crack, people. Amen. He knew it, but he wanted he wanted her to say what she said. And he wanted her to come forth and, and say, it was me. And listen, this morning, that's the same thing he wants us to do as, as, and 
A lot of times he may be saying to us, who are you? Who are you? Who are you? What, what is your problem? And listen, we as God's people need to confess Jesus Christ and we need to say, hey, you are my Savior. You're the one that saved me and I want to tell others about you. But he said here to her, who touched me? And Jesus, and Jesus said, no, and he said, who, and, and then when all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude throng thee and press thee, and sayest thou who touched me? And Peter, in a way, was kind of uh, saying, hey, hey, you, you, are you, you all right? Uh, why are you asking such a question? Mm -hmm. But listen, Peter had a way sometimes of kind of getting beside himself, and uh, uh, he didn't really understand, but I think when, when his days, before his days were ended, he could sit back and smile and say, yeah, I know why you asked that. I know why you said that. And so <clears throat> he said, why do you ask who, who touched me? And Jesus said, somebody has touched me, for I perceive that virtue or power is going out of me. Mm -hmm. And this morning, uh, that power, that power, people, is the same thing that you and I felt the morning or the night or the evening or the day, whatever, when the Lord Jesus Christ saved our Amen. soul and the Holy Spirit was speaking to our hearts and when we when we got when we got through with this this thing of of crying out to God and to uh, asking him for forgiveness and feeling that spirit coming in, that's the same thing he's talking about. Somebody touched me too. And, and I know this come out of me. And he felt it, people. And so he said here, he said, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. And she declared unto him before all the people for what cause she had touched him. And so this is what this is what Jesus wanted. He wanted her to be able to strengthen herself Amen. by telling this whole multitude, and listen, she was trembling, she was afraid, she was uh, crying more likely, and, and it's, a, it's the same, same condition that so many people uh, uh, that they entertain this this problem too when they're saved they they cry and they carry on they shout they holler and they tremble some of them can't say nothing but listen she was trembling and crying and she came to jesus and she was talking to him and she said yes i'm the one that touched you and now she's going to explain to him and and he, he and she declared unto him in verse 47 before all the people for what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. Amen. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Now I want you to I want you to really think on this. Be of good comfort, for thy faith has made thee whole or well, go in peace. Her faith, she had, she had that faith. Amen. She had it before she got to him. She believed, and of course, I, 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 like I say, I got back to this thing of these other experiences that this uh, man in the graveyard and the blind that he touched us, they had that experience also. And she was either told probably or, or seen something or heard something somewhere. But listen, she had that faith that if she could just but get to him, and touch not his body, but just the hem of his garment, that she would be made well. Amen. And that, that people, is faith, and that's what we need more of than what we've got. And every, every ounce of faith that we can uh, get in our, in our spirits and all will draw us that much closer, will give us that more confidence, and when we pray a prayer and ask for God to take care of us, to bless us, to help us with our needs and things of this nature, He'll do it. Amen. And so we as God's people this morning need to understand that, that we need to get close enough to God that we can touch the garment but also, as we touch it, as we touch it, if we haven't got that faith, listen, I, I believe that 
were in vain mm -hmm. because we have, got, we have got to trust God and Jesus Christ for what they can do and what they have done and what they will do. It's got to be that way or it's the highway. We, don't, we won't accomplish anything. And so this morning, I want, I want you to understand this morning when he, said, he, when he said this, he said, you be of good comfort. Because he said, and I, I believe he's saying, it's not really the, the robe, the, 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 the a garment that you're touching as much as is thy faith has made thee well. Amen. Go in peace. And so it's in us this morning to pray to God. We have the Holy Spirit within us. And so many people don't, they can't recognize that. They don't believe that. But the Holy Spirit comes and made his abode. Amen. And when Jesus Christ left here and went to, to be with his father he sent the Holy Spirit and he told the disciples he said I cannot send him I must go of course where I can send him and so he sent the Holy Spirit and he dwells in us and we as God's people need to understand this we need to believe this because listen it's true Amen. the more that you understand about the Holy Spirit dwelling in your body the closer you can get to god amen and so this morning that's what's speaking to your heart this morning that's what's saying to you this morning yes he's telling you the truth you need to do it more and amen. so here here we see and in verse 49 and while he yet spake there come one of the rulers of the synagogue uh, the synagogue house of the synagogue house saying to him Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. And so they said, well, it's all over with. And it's the same way that Mary and, and uh, Martha was with Jesus when Lazarus were. Well, if you'd have been here, if you'd have been here, right. this wouldn't happen. And Jesus was on his way. But listen, he got stopped by another thing that needed help. And listen, you know, we pray and we ask God for this and for that, and sometimes it don't seem like that we can get through. But then one day you wake up and lo and behold, it's happened. Mm -hmm. It's happened. Listen, the old saying is, God does not jump every time you say frog. Amen. And hey, this morning, be patient. Mm -hmm. And when you pray and when you, when you earnestly pray for something, you can, you can, know for sure that the Holy Spirit is presenting that prayer to Jesus and Jesus is presenting that prayer to God. And listen, it may not be his time. He may have, he may, and, and listen, I, I'm not putting no shortness on, on God's hand, but he may know when you need this. Amen. And, and, and the thing here was with Jairus. Jairus said, uh, one place he said, my daughter's dead, another, she's sick come and heal. So the thing of this, he may have had to wait a little while until she died in order to right. for Jairus to see the great miracle that he performed. So we see here uh, <clears throat> and uh, he's, uh, the, the rulers come to him and in verse 50, but when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not, believe only and she shall be made whole. Amen. So here again, as he told the woman, thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith, you, you got well because of your faith. Now he's telling Josh here, he says, believe only. That's all you have to do, just believe, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in except for save Peter and James and John and the father and the mother of the maiden. Now, why? Because all of these others had laughed him to scorn in, in, in one of the writings here. Right. I said, oh, he, he don't know what he's talking about. She's already dead. And so he, he everybody's out, but the, just the loved ones. And he says, well, it's right here. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, keep not, sh keep, weep not. She is not dead, but sleeping. And they, here it is, they laughed him to scorn, right. knowing that she was dead. So again, that's what we have 
this around us this morning is people with unbelief. Uh, uh, and, and some of them, some of them may be saved. Some of, a lot of them may be saved. They had enough faith and, and the Lord chose them and, and they're saved. But listen, their faith is so weak right. this morning that they cannot accept the fact that God is on the throne, that God is, is doing all the things that he does for us and that, that, that we can depend on him for these things. And so they go through life weak as branch water right. and they don't never get no no wonderful gifts from the Lord like they should like they could because of their faith is so weak and so again this morning this is why I wanted to teach this is because listen we need to encourage ourselves and to give God the glory and to Amen. put our faith in him and trust in him because we cannot trust in man. Amen. Uh, you, can, you can build all the castles and the mansions you want to, but when you die, you're going to leave them here for somebody to fight over. And so one that, well, the one that we need to, to talk to and to believe in is the Lord Jesus Christ and God. And so here they, they, uh, they laughed him to scorn in verse 53, knowing that he, that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. Now here, he touched her. She didn't touch him. But listen, he touched her. He took her by the hand. And her spirit came again. But I tell you, let's see. Let me show you. See. I, 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 and she arose straightway. And he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were as astonished, but she charged, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. And so these things that I've tried to uh, say to you this morning shows of two different incidents for that Jesus uh, did, he, he healed and he raised from the dead. And listen, it's back in, in Luke earlier, uh, it's just chug full of things that Jesus did for those that were sick, those that were blind, those that were uh, even, uh, I was, uh, there's a scripture there in, the, in, I think it's in Matthew or Matthew 8, somewhere in there, where that Jesus came to visit Peter and his mother-in-law was sick and right. couldn't, couldn't get up and he he healed her and instantly she got up and she started cooking for him and she started feeding him and so it's it's there for us and all we have to do is accept it and believe it because, uh, he's our he's our savior and god is our father and uh we need to have that we need to have that faith and uh and and and, and you can you can fight this old flesh and, and keep it under control and and have that faith and and you will be a better person and you'll enjoy yourself more and you'll enjoy the presence of the holy spirit Amen. more than what you do because so many people if you say uh you know you you got the holy spirit dwelling within you oh no i, I don't believe in that yeah. well either they're not saved or they just right just, the knowledge is very little so anyway i'll tell you this this morning uh Jesus sent the Holy Spirit here, and uh, uh, He has found His abode in those that are saved, and He speaks to the hearts of them that are His, uh, and He uh, He guides them through that that voice that sometimes tell you, uh, you "Might not want to do that," or "Ain't you ashamed that you did do that?" These are some mm -hmm. of the things that you say. Well, maybe it's just my my memory or my conscience. No. It's, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. He speaks to our hearts and He tells us that uh, we need to kind of straighten up our life or we don't need to do the things that we've been doing and, uh, and we have to go to Him and ask Him to forgive us and to uh, get back and uh, uh, be straight with Him. So this morning, that's our lesson and I hope that uh, you will think about the things that that uh, the Lord has helped you with and give Him honor and glory for it and, and increase your uh, your ability to have Amen. more faith in Him, because uh, uh, just just uh, just believing is what it takes.
So this morning, we, uh, we appreciate you listening to us. Amen.